Hi everyone, myself Dr. Capricorn. Welcome to my channel. Today we will be learning about Hoover sign. Let's get started. Hoover sign. Let's first see how we perform this test. We ask patient to lie on a couch in a supine position. Then ask to lift the left foot off the couch with a leg extended. The right heel will be observed to dig into the couch as the left leg is elevated. Then place your hand under the Achilles tendon of the right side and sense the muscular resistance offered by the right leg. You will observe that the right heel is pressed onto the couch with the same force which is exhibited in lifting the left leg off the couch. This will always occur if a normal healthy person makes a free and uninhibited effort to lift the left leg and vice versa. Now, we will see why this test is performed and how can we differentiate organic cause of paresis from non-organic one. Hoover sign can differentiate organic cause or paresis or weakness of leg from non-organic causes such as malingering and conversion disorders. However, it is difficult to differentiate that whether patient is having conversion disorder or malingering. Hoover sign is later on modified by Adams and Victor. Let's understand how to differentiate organic paresis from the non-organic or functional paresis. In organic paresis, the test is elicited in two steps that is, hip extension and flexion. Firstly hip extension, place your hand under each heel of the patient and ask the patient to press the heels down forcefully. In organic paresis, downward pressure will be felt from normal leg and not from the weak leg. After performing the previous step, you remove your hand from under surface of heel of the normal leg and places it on top of that leg and ask patient to raise the leg against resistance. Then feel for pressure difference. No added pressure will be felt by the hand under the weak leg. If the patient is asked to raise the weak leg against gravity, downward pressure will be felt under the normal leg. Same procedure is used to elicit functional paresis. Firstly hip extension, when the examiner that is, you, places a hand under the heel of the weak leg and asks the patient to press the heel down forcefully, it appears weak but when the opposite hip is flexed against resistance, downward pressure will be felt under the heel of weak leg. This discrepancy between voluntary hip extension, which is weak, and involuntary hip extension, which is normal, when the opposite hip is being flexed against resistance suggests functional paresis. After performing the previous step, you place your hand under heel of normal leg and asks the patient to flex his weak leg at the hip. If downward pressure is not felt under the normal leg, then it suggests a functional weakness. That means, the effort is not being transmitted to either leg. Mechanism of Hoover sign. This can be explained by two mechanism. First, cross extensor reflex, which was explained by Sherrington. As you can see in this picture, whenever we step on broken glass or nail, the pain receptors get stimulated, then via the dorsal root ganglia, this signal goes to spinal cord, then their multiple interneurons get activated, of which some stimulate ipsilateral flexors, and some stimulates contralateral extensors. By stimulating flexors, this causes removal of leg from the object, in this case, broken glass, while other leg is extended, so that the person does not fall. This is called cross extensor reflex. Second, by the principle of synergistic contraction, which was originally explained by Hoover as complementary opposition. However, there are certain limitations of this test, which we have to kept in mind. Hoover sign can be falsely positive, in cases such as, pain in the affected hip, cortical neglect, or in cases of organic brain diseases, such as multiple sclerosis. It can also be falsely negative, if the patient has bilateral paresis. Now, let's discuss about another Hoover sign. Both these Hoover signs are named for Charles Franklin Hoover. In this sign, there is paradoxical inward movement of the lower lateral costal margins during inspiration, as you can see in this picture. This sign is seen in COPD, particularly emphysema and also during chest hyperinflation. In this image you can see, various signs and symptoms of COPD, that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Let's now understand the mechanism. As in COPD and chest hyperinflation, air gets trapped, leading to stretching and flattening of diaphragm. The flattened diaphragm when contracts during inspiration, pulls lower ribs, inward along with it. Thanks for watching. How was the video? Do let me know in comment section. 
please do like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to press the bell icon for more updates. Have a great day.